It's been my opportunity over the last 33 years to study the life of the Prophet Joseph Smith. As an epic historian, I have an opportunity to study a very small little window of, uh, of LDS church history. And I've elected over, uh, over these many years to go 1805 to 1844. And so I have been about everywhere that the Prophet Joseph Smith ever hung his hat. And it's been my opportunity to do a lot of on-site research and develop an awful lot of interesting theories with regards to the life of the Prophet Joseph Smith. I'm going to share a few thoughts with you over the next few minutes with regards to some of the more significant things the Prophet Joseph did. Over the last many years, uh, 10, 15 years, I've had the opportunity through a number of travel agencies here in the valley to take interested groups of LDS individuals to these sacred church history sites. With my knowledge and understanding of the Prophet Joseph, I've been able to introduce them to Joseph the man, uh, Joseph the father, the husband, Joseph the prophet. But in so doing, I have formulated a real different opinion of the Prophet Joseph than perhaps I had 30 years ago. I have a degree in archaeology and anthropology, and with that degree, over the last uh, 50 years, I have been taught, educated, the concept that the Book of Mormon geography was in Mesoamerica, South America. I have had a struggle over the last 10 years accepting that as I visited the sacred church history sites and having researched Joseph Smith and his contemporaries and those who, who called him friend, uh, the Prophet Joseph Smith did not, did not speak of the Book of Mormon being in Mesoamerica or South America ever. And in fact, just the opposite. I take groups to these sites and I try and make them a very significant and spiritual experience for these people. As we stand on the hill Camorra, looking out into the valleys below, into Camorra land, we make them very, very spiritual as we talk about the potential that these areas, in fact, might be the very areas the Book of Mormon peoples walked long ago. As I got to know Rod, I was pleased to find out that there are a group of people out there. There is uh, an, ex an enormous amount of material relative to the geography of the Book of Mormon being right here in North America. Uh, as I got to know Rod and, and those who worked with him and started to uh, read, to study, to ponder and pray the materials that he had put together, uh, it became very, very clear to me that the way I had felt for over 10 years in my introduction to these sacred sites, to those who, who uh, joined me on my trips, was, uh, was validated. That there is some truth to the things I was feeling and, and the, some truth to the things I was sharing with others. I've had an opportunity now to, uh, to meet with Rod on a number of occasions and to be a part of, a, of some of his research, reviewing some of the data that he's collected, the research that he's put together, he and others. And uh, I'm pleased to say that I am very, very happy to have been a part of all of this and very pleased with the material as I've read through it. It's been my opportunity to check for the historical accuracy of the material relative to the Prophet Joseph. And in so doing, I have found that, uh, that they're right on the mark, that there are no discrepancies, there are no issues that they have presented that are not taken truthfully out of the text, the original text itself. Uh, I am here to endorse it 100%. If you'll take the time to ponder, to study, to reflect, and to pray about the materials that you've uh, seen and that you will see or that you may study relative to this topic, I think you'll find that your testimony relative to the Prophet Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon, its geography, its people is going to be very, very meaningful to you. That as you visit these sacred sites that you'll understand and appreciate their significance and and in so doing, your testimonies will grow, that you'll have a greater understanding of the Book of Mormon, its truths, and its reality.